DNA is composed of four elements of hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon. When put together, they form YHWG. Carbon is what makes us physical and earthly beings. When carbon is replaced with nitrogen, we have all colorless, odorless, and visible gases. They form the letters Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, which is the name of God. Okay? <laughs> so when you tell people that you are God, and they laugh at you and scoff at everything else, just, you know, bless them and walk away. That's what I do. They don't know the power that's inside of them yet. They're still in that uh, matrix mindset. They're still caught up in the system. One thing you got to realize about people on this planet is that they don't realize that they are operating in a matrix and that they're all part of a, a lot of them, when they don't raise their consciousness, are part of a program. And they don't realize that that program has created them, has turned them into prisoners and prison guards. And when they see a, pr a prisoner trying to break out of the prison, they turn from a prisoner into a prison guard right away. And they try to keep you locked up. And that's, what, that's the abruptness that you feel when you begin to talk about these advanced concepts to people. You can also call it the, the, um, the Agent Smith effect, like in the uh, Matrix. So if you're talking to a friend of yours about 9-11, for example, and well, you, well, if you're talking about the Kardashians, it might be a great conversation. They may be laughing and going back and forth. But as soon as you stop them to talk about 9-11, the person changes. Their countenance changes. Their face changes. Their eyes change. All of a sudden, they've gone from a Matrix program uh, that's just operating on basic matrix programming into a prison guard matrix program now, and they're going to stop you from talking about this conspiracy because it goes against, you know, the whole system. And we can't have that happen. We can't have the system collapse. So they turn into Agent Smith. If you look at the Matrix movie, Agent Smith jumps into other people's bodies uh, that are supposed to be normal people in the Matrix, and he becomes them. So it's, it's you know, it's, it's the Agent Smith effect. But mapping the chemical sequences for human DNA, the chemical letters that make up the recipe of human life is a breakthrough that is expected to revolutionize the practice of medicine by paving the way for new drugs and med medical uh, therapies, says one website. The discovery has lasting physical and spiritual implications. A direct link can easily be found between the building blocks of life and the creator of the universe. Mankind is fearfully and wonderfully made with a hidden code within the cell of every life. Uh, the code is the alphabet of DNA that spells out the creator's name and the man's purpose. Scientists discovered a map of our DNA, uh, bases that carry a, the ability to sustain life. These bases, known as chromosomes, are paired differently for each person. Human DNA contains 23 pairs of chromosomes made up of hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon, and their acidic counterparts. Encoded within these elements is an amazing blueprint of life that proves the Creator has put his own unique time stamp, or unique stamp, I shouldn't say his, because I don't know if the Creator is directly a he. Uh, but the Creator has put his unique stamp on every, upon every person. The stamp is actually his name revealed to Moses thousands of years ago. So, this goes back a long time. Now, what happened was these Atlantean people were map, uh, they knew all this information. They're the ones who started the mystery schools, obviously, well, obviously, Thoth was, but he was an Atlantean. But they masqueraded as, some of them masqueraded as gods, unfortunately. So, knowing this information, putting themselves in the God position and trying to usher in a monotheistic mindset is a one God system, they were able to utilize this science on the people and get them to think that they were the ones that had put this code in our bodies, when in true reality what they did was genetically modify us and actually try to disconnect us from the knowing about this code. That's one of the other biggest secrets that's out there. Human beings are extremely powerful beings. We have the capability of exceeding the people that genetically modified us and they realized this. There was a situation at the Tower of Babel, the Tower of Babel in Babylonia, uh, where human beings came together on one accord in peace and in love to build a tower into space. Now, whether it was just a high rise, whether it was a, a replica of something that they saw these Anunnaki people build that they were calling God, who was actually one of the leaders at that time was Yahweh, who was known as Enlil. That's Enlil in the ancient Sumerian tablets, but known as Yahweh in the modern day Bible. Enlil had gone away for a while. When he comes back, he sees his tower being built by people in unison, peace, and harmony, and what does he do? He destroys it. Why does he destroy this tower? Why would the creator of the universe see people working together in peace and harmony and destroy their works? It didn't make any sense. It's not the, he wasn't the creator of the universe, that's why. He was a person masquerading as a creator, and when he realized, oh man, in his exact words in the tablets were, no matter what man sets out to do, no matter what man puts in his heart to do, he will achieve it. And the same words, almost so to speak, made it into the modern day Bible. 
But basically what he was saying was, oh man, they can rise up higher than us. If they outnumber us, i got to do something about this. So he says a couple things. First thing he says is, my seed shall not abide a man forever. His years will be 120. So the first thing he did was, he took down that lifespan we were having, the luxury of having. Because prior to that, we were living for thousands of years, literally. Our avatar bodies were sustaining for thousands of years uh, with ease. But what did he do? He put a telomere caps on chromosome number two. So he took chromosome number two, fused it together, put two caps on it. In the caps are buffer material. And that buffer material, genetic buffer material, runs out after so many duplications and replications of DNA and cells in your body. So as that happens, you begin to start the death process when those buffer material inside those telomere caps run out. Scientists at Harvard discovered that this was true. They discovered that this, this, this fusion happened about 200,000 years ago, ironically the same exact time that the uh, Sumerian tablets talk about genetically modifying human beings to be a slave worker. Okay, so modern science backing up Sumerian tablets. Um, then what did he do? He took people and split them up and put them all around the planet and confused their languages. So not only did he sort our lifespans, but the next thing he did was he confused our languages so that we can be at odds with one another. We can't even communicate no more. Now, you say to yourself, this should have taught the average person any kind of common sense whatsoever, that this was some type of a, a you know, plot and some type of scheme that would be run on us. But because when an advanced civilization meets with a less advanced civilization, the beings that are more advanced are automatically deified. It's the mindset that we have. And then to add more insult to injury, they inserted their worship gene into us to enhance that mindset. This has also been scientifically proven. We have a worship gene that can be turned on and turned off in our bodies. Okay, this is all verified by real science. So this is real amazing stuff. So when you begin to look at this, you begin to look like, oh, wow, this is, this is, they've been trying to hide the true divinity, the fact that we are God from everyone. And the way that we were created, Enki, I mean Enlil got mad at his brother Enki, because after Enlil analyzed our DNA a little bit, he realized that Enki gave us a little bit extra. <laughs> and that we had the capability of even superseding them. And that caused a conflict between the two. Uh, so, yeah, Enki uh, really did love humans, even though he agreed to do the genetic modification to avoid a, a war that they were going to have with, um, with the EGG over the workload. He agreed to it, and he did do that genetic modification, but he also fell in love with humans, and Noah was actually his son. So that's why he saved uh, Noah from the flood. According to the ancient Egyptians, we are gods. Yahweh in the Bible, often mistaken for the biblical God, is not the creator of the universe. Aya Ashir, meaning I am that I am, in Exodus 3, 14 through 15, or Yah for short. Our DNA sequence spells Yah, so whether you like it or not, the Bible is on a, is on a scientific on a creation level. At least the Bible got the name right. <laughs> this is us. Psalm 82, 6 says, I said, ye are gods, and ye are all children of the Most High. John 10, 34 says, Yeshua answered them, It is not written in your law. I said, ye are gods. So wouldn't we have a, uh, well, so why wouldn't we have God's name? Yes, it's Yahweh or Yahweh, or Yahweh, however you want to pronounce it, also translated as Jehovah or Jehovah, for the average English mind. Not only does Yahweh in Hebrew, when stacked vertically, create the basic layout of a human, the head, shoulders, two arms, torso, and legs, the numerical value of Yahweh adds up to create our 46 human chromosomes. Like I told you, every single letter in Hebrew has a numeric uh, 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 appointment. It is read from left to right and pronounced Yod, which is fire, he, water, Vav, air, he, earth. So you see there, those relate directly to the platonic solids that were discovered or rediscovered really much later in, uh, in, um, in Greek. The four main elements of our planet. The fifth is disputed in the platonic solids as ether, Aether, universe, Asian Eastern philosophy is metal, Allah, arm, leg, head. Wake up to your God self. So we are literally gods. I mean, I can't say it more than enough. And if you look at a cross section of DNA, what do you find? The flower of life. Flower of life. Now, who heard Terrence Howard talking about this the other day? Okay. Yeah, he was going in, wasn't he? He was like, they called him at an interview with some very popular event. I forget what it was, some award ceremony. He like, looked like somebody plugged him into an eye. He's like, the flower of life, and there are no straight lines. You know, he just went in. But what the brother was trying to say was there's a lot more to reality than we know, and all this is just really an illusion. 
there's something on another level, consciously, that we need to show and teach people about, and all the energy and vibration and frequency that allows us to play in this third dimension is emanating from the intersection of circles inside the flower of life, which we're going to talk about when I go into some of the hermetic principles. So everywhere where you see a cross-section cut, a connection there of these circles, it creates something called a vesica piscis. And inside the vesica piscis, you have a womb. It's a womb. All life emanates from a womb. If you cut an orange in half, if you cut a lemon in half, if you open up an oyster, you're going to see a womb. That's what it looks like. A womb is even now at our galactic center. The mind is called the womb of life. But the vesica piscis, which is inside the flower of life, which is inside something called the 64 grid tetrahedron, which is housed in that geometrical, two-dimensional geometrical, three-dimensional geometric uh, figure, uh, encompasses or encases something called the vector equilibrium. And inside the vector, e vector equilibrium, you have a source of unlimited power in every plunk unit in space-time, unlimited source of energy. And so he understood this now through his, I guess, his research and understanding, and he began to realize that, wow, there's a lot more to life than just what I'm doing. I want to pursue now this information, especially when he began to realize that everything is based on spheres. Everything is based on curvature. Everything is only electromagnetic waves, and solidity is an illusion. What stops my hand from going through this table? All it is is the repul repulsion of the electromagnetic frequency in my hand and the electromagnetic frequency that's inside this table. But all atoms vibrate at a specific frequency. So. If I were to take the atoms, the frequency of the atoms in my hand and tune them to the same frequency as the atoms in this table, I could pass my hand right through this table without a scratch, without a problem at all. So people walking through walls and beings walking through walls and so forth, it's not magic. It's just technology. I see a lot of things that people see as magic as a combination of spiritual technology woven into a civilization, an advanced civilization, maybe a type 2 civilization. So I believe that those things really do, truly do happen, but I believe it has to do with people understanding how to phase shift their atomic frequency. Atoms are mostly empty space. This is a known fact, 99.9% .9 empty space. So truly, reality is an illusion. This is why the ancients call it sleepy time or dream time, the state that we're in, because nothing's really here, okay? And if you take and you zoom in to particles, the closer you zoom in, the more you realize that you can go to infinity and you can see the entire object in the smallest particle. This is what to me proves that we're living in a fractal holographic universe. We're living in a matrix. So if you look at a real hologram, one that we can make on a computer with laser lights, and you take a small piece of that hologram away and look at it, you're going to see the entire hologram in the smallest piece. The only thing you lose is resolution. Okay? And this is what they understood. So it's the power of knowledge and the power of knowing that our spirit body has these superpowers. The human avatar bodies are pretty much built on a lattice of carbon-12 isotope, which is built from six protons, six electrons, and six neutrons. Sounds familiar? Six, six, six. The isotope of carbon accounts for 99% of all uh, forms of carbon. It is the isotope carbon, which consists of 12, which, uh, which 12 consists of 12 electrons, six protons, and six neutrons. Six, six, six. After oxygen, the most abundant element in the human body is carbon-12. On cremation, the body returns to its carbon-12 state after all gases like oxygen, helium, hydrogen are released. Carbon-12 is one of the five elements that make up the human DNA. Carbon-12 is the most crucial isotope needed to create living biology. This is exactly what the writer of Revelation was referring to when he said that 666 was the number of a man, which is the carbon-12. The ancients knew that atoms and quantum physics, carbon-12 is the basis of, of the physical body and the link that ties man to the physical universe. 666 is us. The whole fear factor behind 666, 666 was used to distract you away from finding out the power of creation that's inside of your body. But we literally are, we literally represent, every human being on this planet represents the 666. It's just a fact of life. Hi, my name is Billy Carson. I'm the president of Forbidden Knowledge. Are you looking for an amazing opportunity that you can invest in that's already generating revenue, a company that's already making money and profits right now today? Well, look no further, Forbidden Knowledge. We have our own streaming TV network. We're now approved and streaming already on Apple TV, 
Roku, Amazon Fire TV, the iOS App Store, Google Play Store, and the web. We have over 5,200 amazing shows with over 22,000 subscribers. We just reached our one-year anniversary, and we have a phenomenal base with huge potential upside. We're looking to be three times this size by this time next year, and you can be a big part of that. So please review this information and join us at Forbidden Knowledge. Thank you. You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV.